Very well. Let's talk matters technology. Let's talk matters innovation. This week on our weekly feature, The Innovator, we tell you how social media influencer and affiliate marketing is fast becoming a preference for more small and medium enterprises and how entrepreneurs in this market are tapping into that opportunity. Take a look. Marketing in the digital world is fast taking a convenience approach where businesses want to be more relatable with their target markets and clients. Such gave the rise to influencer marketing, a model where brands associate more with their celebrities and personalities who match their marketing needs with the hope to convert social following to retainable clients. Community and just bring Peter Kironji, CEO and founder of Twiver, saw the opportunity and created Twiver the one-stop shop for brands to meet influencers and create value through conversion. Ours was, can we create something that can give the small business owner a platform where they can promote their uh, business, their product or services in an efficient and an affordable manner. So we started as an influencer marketing platform, just connecting the business to an influencer. And this is how Twiver works. For the marketing part, you sign up on our platform mm -hmm. and you have exposure to a database of thousands of influencers. We give you the tools to know which influencer is light for you in terms of what is your brand, what is the product, what is your target audience. Um, so we give you the platforms to collaborate with the influencers uh, so that they can market your brand. On the social commerce, which is the ability to sell, you list a product as a business, and that is all you have to do, just listing the product. So once a business adds a product on a uh, Twiver platform, all those products are exposed to all the influencers in thousands. Influencers will select what aligns with their brand and what they believe they can sell, add that to their Twiver shop, and we do everything else. And everything else is to automate the process of taking that one product from the influencer shop and pushing it to their Facebook account, their Instagram account, their YouTube account, their TikTok account. And then consumers will discover these products on social media platforms. There have been concerns that not all influencer marketing campaigns make it to convert to sales to the client. Peter asserts that not all businesses need influencer marketing strategy and it all depends in the way marketing plan is done. Businesses, you know, um, believe that to work with an influencer is to look for a celebrity influencer. Um, and then if they have the numbers, number of followers, you expect them to convert. Um, that doesn't work. And we have tried that and failed terribly. Uh, we have worked with businesses that have preferred to do that. It doesn't work. So influencer marketing, who is an influencer? To us, is someone who can convert. So we don't really... Uh, care about the number of followers. Yes, they count, but do you have the ability to convert? For The Innovator, this week on KTN News, I'm Brian George Otieno. Very well, Brenda, some interesting images right there. And the Kenya Innovation Week is going on at the Kenya School of Government. Brenda, what, what do you think is sparring all this innovation in the country right now? I mean, Abi, if you look at each and every sector of the economy, almost everything is touching on technology mm -hmm. and innovation and startups. They are all looking at solutions that can make it easier for people to do business and even their daily lives, looking at the fintech market and all aspects in relation to the financial I sector. It. I mean, the other day, the Central Bank of Kenya released data in terms of their point uh, POS systems, and it's like they're being implemented right across each and every retail sector. It just goes to show you that people don't necessarily want to carry their money using their hands but they want to use alternative payment methods so that they can use that looking at agriculture there are so many technologies around that around creating food security and at the same time looking at the manufacturing sector as much as people are worried that there might be a disruption in terms of creating jobs and also destroying a lot of jobs but technology is making work easier and also boosting productivity in various sectors of the economy 
Very well. So let's take a look at uh, how the markets are performing in the Nairobi Securities Exchange right here, as tabulated for you in the business section, page 33 of the standard newspaper, because it's only the bold that say the truth. Um, let's look at how the markets have been closing and opening today. Brenda, which are the best performing companies in the NSE? Let me just walk you through just how bad the picture is. It's quite a very grim picture because the NSC 20 share index is actually at a seven month low. You can imagine that. And some, of course, of the key gainers for yesterday's trading include the Diamond Trust, Everedi, you have Samir, CIC Insurance, and INDM Holdings. And of course, the key losers include uh, TP, Serena. And we also have uh, Housing Finance Group and Total also and Stanbic. <coughs> Those are just some of the key losers. There is a concern in relation to the banking sector, also the energy and petroleum. Now, for this energy and petroleum, I should say it's in relation to the new variant, the Omicron variant, and just how it has completely disrupted the market. Remember, there are quite a number of travel restrictions that have been put in place, especially in developed economies. So that means that demand for the commodity oil Oil is definitely going to dip so we are going to have a lot of supply and low demand that of course has pushed prices of the commodity down so looking forward that will be a key indicator especially considering the fact that we are going into the festivities where we expect demand to pick up we expect people to travel right across various countries even as they they continue enjoying the festivities so of course this is another picture that we are looking at energy and petroleum sector we are also looking at manufacturing and the allied sector. It's also another key concern because this specific industry has been disrupted by the pandemic. We have seen cost of inputs actually soaring because there have been quite a number of disruptions from where they are coming from. China is the biggest market. And of course, this has tightened regulations in relation to the Omicron variant. So, I mean, you're looking at very expensive inputs. And this, of course, will trickle down to the basic commodities and services. You're looking at very, very heavy Hefty prices when it comes to commodities, especially at the start of the year. Brian? Very interesting conversation right there, Brenda. I love the way you've cap captured particularly how health is directly, you know, proportional to business. In this day and age particularly, when we are, we're just seeing economies are trying to, you know, come back. Uh, airlines are now operating. We have, the Omicron vi variant has rattled markets as far as the Ni New York Securities Exchange right there. As early as last week, there was already concerns about various companies that have been listed right there losing um, you know, their share value. So we're keeping an eye on that. But then let's go take you back to the Kenya Innovation Week. Kenya having a week-long national innovation event dubbed the Kenya Innovation Week, signifying a great milestone in enhancing the country's innovation system the five-day event seeks to showcase the innovativeness of Kenyans and also strengthen the research and commercialization practices for greater socio-economic impact. Speaking during the opening ceremony on Monday, ICT Cabinet Secretary noted that Kenyan innovators have for a long time lacked the support to upscale their innovations due to the framework of investment. He challenged the innovators to change tact in order to attract equity from key investors. Innovation is a driver of economic development. Much innovation takes place at small and medium-sized enterprises. In Kenya, SMEs contribute to over 30% of the country's GDP and account for over 80% of the new jobs in the country. Innovation is critical for delivering sustained and scalable solutions to the complex development challenges we face today. We have many innovations, but those innovations are not able to link with the investors. And even when they link, the, the framework of investment, I think, is one of the big uh, challenges. The investor is looking for guarantees that the business is going to deliver the promise that they are making. The innovator is looking for cash to be able to build or research or you know, get the idea uh, to commercialize it and make it work. And that's not always 
uh, working out well. So we need to find a methodology on how, you know, through Kenya, we can put together that a framework that will allow for that integration, allow for the negotiations and the discussions to happen. You know, we were just joking earlier on with Brenda that we are, we are friends of Arsenal, we love Arsenal. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for staying with us on Business Cafe this morning. Business today will be later on in the afternoon. Brenda, Arsenal are doing us all the favors. Sisi Kama Manchester. Brenda, I'm not sure whether it's the business of sports or the politics of sports because we know we, we are diehard supporters of Manchester all yes. the way. Mm. Hashtag Kiburi FC. You know how we do. Sisi Kama Manchester. All right. Thank you so much for watching <laughs> Business Cafe. Of course, we will keep you up to tabs in relation to our top story of the police officer in our sub subsequent bulletins. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been your host Brenda Kirubo. Have and a good Brian morning.